somebody like it, it, along the way to not give up no matter what hello everyone hi well, X, I guess is how you would refer to it now, no longer Twitter. And hello, YouTube. Thanks everyone that's watching. Jen here for Natalie Jones Community, as well as Kat. Hello. <laughs> Miss Monotone over there. And then with the Missing and Murdered Moms, we have Aunt Tammy, who we'll refer to her as Aunt Tammy, Tamara McCoy, who is Olivia Fowler's aunt or aunt as you would say in the South. And we have Jamie Brand, who is Sydney Kersey's sister. Hi, ladies. How are you? So we wanted to kick off 2024. We appreciate everyone for tuning in. If you guys have any questions, feel free to start commenting. We'll get to them as we're able to. Many of you may not be following us on other platforms. And so we wanted to get this raise awareness for all of these, these missing and murdered moms across as much um, and as many platforms as we could. So it's 2024. It's time for justice for all of these women and men that are also unalived. So kicking things off here, um, what we can do, we're also going to be advocating for Heather Turner, uh, their community admin, Mary, great lady. She was unable to join us this evening, but she says hello to you, Aunt Tammy and Jamie. I know that you guys have spoken with Mary before. Yeah. Um, she is also in the Bermuda Triangle of the South, unfortunately. And um, just to start off here, we got Max, Teresa, some people from our groups and watching and listening. So, hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, just to start off here, many people are may not be aware of what the Bermuda Triangle of the South is. So I can quickly go into that just to let everyone know. Um, hi, Tanya, thanks for joining in. So the Bermuda Triangle of the South is what we have mapped out as a commu as communities for all of these missing and murdered moms, where there has just been a lot of mysterious and strange cases of unalived women and men for that matter as well. And uh, at the very top of the triangle in Georgia is Paulding County. That case was Heather Turner. Um, she was born June 20th of 1981, and she was found unalived in her home, uh, by her, I, I don't believe he was legally her husband, but referred to as her husband on May the 4th of 2017 under suspicious circumstances. She passed away when she was 35 years old. Right below that, you have a recent case from Coweta County, Georgia, which oversees the Tri-County Judicial Court Circuit for many of these counties like Troop, Coweta, Heard, etc. And that case was for a beautiful woman, um, Tiffany Foster Starks. She was last seen on March the 1st of 2020, 2021 in Noonan, Georgia. And um, then also we have Natalie Jones, who was, um, she was born December 14th, 1992, and was 
found under suspicious circumstances on October 6, 2020. She was found um, deceased at 27 years old. Then you have a little bit south, uh, southeast of there, you have Meriwether County. Now in that county, you have Aunt Tammy's niece and, and, and loved one, Olivia Samantha Fowler, who was born March 23rd, 1993. Is it Aunt Tammy? 95. 95. And yeah. remains were found on December 13th, 2022. We'll get into a little bit more of the backstory after this. Um, so you guys can understand some connections here. Then we have Lauren Henderson, who was found at a commissioner's home. We'll get more into this in a little bit. Uh, in Talbot County, right below Meriwether County, she was born on June 25th, 1991, and she was found um, deceased in this commissioner's home on September uh, 14th, or is it 18th? I can't remember. 18th. 18th of 2021. Yes. And then you also have Jamie, uh, who you see on screen here, Jamie's sister, a beautiful young woman, Sydney uh, McKelvey Kersey. And she was born on December 13th, 1979. And she was found on September 22nd, 2019. We also have other missing and, and unalive people that include Dewey Boggs, Vince League, um, a, a whole slew of other people. But that is what has been branded, in other words, as the Bermuda Triangle of the South. Lots of unsolved cases, undetermined causes of death. Some of these cases remain open, some of them closed. And we'll just kick things off here by going into um, all of these ladies' stories. So we'll start off, Kat. I'll let you go get into um, raising awareness and advocating for uh, beautiful Heather Turner. And then I'll segue into that with Natalie Jones. Um, Jamie, if you can follow up with me with just giving kind of like a high level overview on, on Sydney and the details surrounding her case. And then Aunt Tammy, you go ahead and drink some water because you're gonna you're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have Olivia, uh, Lauren, and um, if you want to speak about Tiffany as well, Miss Beautiful Tiffany. So drink some water now and, and brace for it. Kat, do you want to start us off with um, I am. a little bit about yes, so, uh, okay. so um Heather Turner's husband, Andy, found his wife shot inside the couple's bathroom in Dallas, Georgia on May 4th of 2017. It's 6 a.m. on Thursday, May 4th, 2017. Andy Turner called 911. He told the 911 dispatcher. My wife just shot herself. During the 14 minute 911 call, Andy said, I was in the bathroom and I heard the noise. The dispatcher asked Andy, you heard her? He replied, and I found her. In the 911 call, Andy alleged he found Heather in the shower. I'm getting her out of the shower, said Turner on the 911 call. He, he also told the dispatcher he was going to turn the water off. During the 911 call, Andy's parents arrived on the scene before first responders. At about the 12 minute mark in the call, the dispatcher asked Andy's dad, you believe she's beyond all help? He replied, yes, ma'am. The pot and county coroner Lindsay Eberhardt put in her report the officers arrived at 6 13 a.m. followed by the EMS at 6 15 a.m. In her report she stated Heather was found naked on her back on the bathroom floor. She also noted a wall near the toilet had appeared to be, to be washed. Eberhardt Elberhart requested the GBI medical examiner take possession of Heather's body for an autopsy. Going on seven years later, her death still remains labeled as undetermined. It's an open investigation according to both the Pawden County Sheriff's Office and the GBI. The Pawden County District Attorney said he cannot comment on the open investigation. 
So that is part of Miss Heather Turner's story. So. Yes, you guys. And um, again, we we will uh, we can plug all of the socials here. Um, she has uh, Heather's community has TikTok, a Facebook page. You all could follow. Um, Thank you for that, Kat. Um, she was a beautiful, beautiful lady. And I think well, I really feel that that case is cut and dry. It should be cut and dry, in my opinion. But um, it's just, you know, we're in the Bermuda Triangle of the South. This is normal, right? Or, or something that we've sadly normalized. All right, you guys, Natalie Jones. There's a ton of information. I'm going to keep it high level. And then we, we can all do kind of like a roundtable discussion about the odd things or whatever that we want to talk about. Any questions that you guys have? I'm just going to jump in right here. So Natalie Pearl Jones of Hogansville, Georgia, was located deceased in her vehicle on October 6, 2020, in a field of a very rural part of Heard County, Georgia. Natalie was a 27-year-old white female that drove a very distinctive 2002 hot pink four-door Chevy Cavalier and went missing in the late evening hours on July 4th, 2020. She was last seen leaving a holiday party that she was invited to in Jackson's Gap, Alabama, that she attended with an ex-boyfriend of hers at his family's vacation lake house. And she was last seen at 10.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, that's 11.30 p.m. Eastern, the ex's mother stated that she saw a text from Natalie the next morning, Sunday, July the 5th, that she had received at 1252 hours saying, I made it. Thanks again. Multiple warrant slash subpoenas were requested by her county investigators for the cell phone records early in the missing persons investigation before she was located on October 6, 2020 which is 93 days missing in a field on a remote property that is owned by a landowner that lives nowhere near the property. Um, this field was located at the corner of Roosterville and Welcome Road in rural Heard County, Georgia. In and around the area where she was located, it was determined from local investigators that her phone pinged several times in near proximity to her location in the early morning hours of July 5th, 2020. Natalie Jones' body and vehicle were found by the landowner's nephew while he was bush hogging the field for the landowners after being asked that very day since the landowners don't, lear, don't live near the property. It was reported by the landowner that they hired someone to do it, but never revealed it was actually a family, a family member that lived close in proximity. This discovery comes two days after the volunteer group and popular YouTube Adventures with Purpose arrived into town announced at that to, and stated that they were in town looking um, for Natalie to search properties and bodies of water. This case yielded a multitude of dead end leads and some viable leads. Um, and here are some just really quick facts pertaining to the death of Natalie Jones. The vehicle and her body were located in a field owned by a retired attorney, a re, excuse me, a retired attorney with an active bar status who doesn't live in the county. His nephew stated that to the investigators and the GBI, which is the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, that he thought it may be a hunter he found in a hot pink car. Okay, right. Um, that's just my opinion. Everything here is expressed uh, as opinion as far uh, just for <laughs> entertainment and legal discl disclaimers, if we will. Um, and then he did not realize who it was until he saw a flyer of Natalie Jones at the store where he then called police. The vehicle was found with the trunk popped open and the passenger door ajar or was not completely closed. Windows were all up and the key inserted in the off position. We will disclose that there is a small section of hair that was found closed in the door jam of the driver's side door. Let me repeat that. Natalie's hair was found closed in the door jam of the driver's side door. 
Natalie held 5% stock in her most recent politically connected tech X's rural Wi-Fi business. It didn't appear that she was working for him after the breakup in late 2019. However, there are documented photos of Natalie visiting tower sites in May and June of 2020. A small bag of air quote methamphetamine was found on the passenger seat Crime scene photos do not show the substance inside or outside of the bag. Natalie Jones had been missing for 93 days. All right, that's Natalie, you guys. We'll get into more of the get into more of it here after everyone else goes. Jamie, um, can you tell us about the beautiful Sydney? Yes. Um, Sydney was a 39-year-old daughter, mother of three, grandmother of now two granddaughters, um, a sister and so much more. Um, she was found on September 22nd, 2019, unalived in the woods off of Oak Mountain Road in Shiloh, Georgia by hunters. Um, she had went missing September 18th, 2019. And uh, my mom, I talked to her that morning and around seven and she told my mom that she wanted to tell her something, but she never got the chance to do that. Um, she was last seen at her boyfriend's house, which is located across the street from where she was found in the woods. Um, he had, he told us that, um, she just took off walking and she was seen later that afternoon on the back of four wheeler going in the woods with another male. And um, Friday, um, the guy that she was with for about a year found her book bag on the side of the road and brought it to my mom's house and we filed a missing persons report. And um, Saturday, we had a little search party um, off of Oak Mountain Road trying to, you know, find her. And then Sunday, September 22nd, 2019, we got the dreadful call from the sheriff saying that he was 90% sure that it was in fact Sydney. Uh, that they found in the woods and of all days September 22nd had to be her youngest daughter's birthday so, a day that she'll never forget and to this day we still don't have the justice and answers that we deserve to have and it's going on it'll be five years in September it's just way too long um and just to to circle back here you guys I, I just want to mention that Natalie's case has been officially closed since December of 2022, when a select group of us, along with Elaine, Natalie's mother, sat down with the DA's office. Um, Heather Turner's case is still open, and Sydney's case is still open as well, correct? Correct. Gotcha. And her cause of death right now is undetermined. Undeter yet another undetermined cause of death, yes. Um, and, and she had, can you talk a little bit about her, her babies, you know, and just her as a person? She was a wonderful person. She was and, a grandmother, right? Yes. Um, she had a wonderful smile that would light up a room. She would uh, do anything for you. She has two granddaughters now. Um, that she should be here to enjoy that. And she, she was just a wonderful person. Like, like yeah, and her um, oldest daughter is about to get married. And she's gonna miss that. Yeah, she, all of these, all of these women deserve to be here. Yeah. They should still be here. And, 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 and you, you all and all of these communities should not have to be here fighting for justice for people that should, that felt that they had the right to, you know, take these beautiful souls out of this world. 
Aunt Tammy, are you hydrated and ready to go? Yeah, it's hot. It's hell up in here. You know I live in an A-frame house, right? <laughs> I, I've seen your roof, yeah. So why don't you uh, go in any order that you want with Olivia, um, Lauren Henderson, no. and and then we after that we can kind of get into the swirl of how they connect, but individually let's 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 uh, tell their well, story I'm, I'm gonna go with tiffany first because i really don't there hasn't been a lot released um tiffany went missing back in march of 2021 also and um she still has not been found and as of today i spoke with her mom and i do conversate with both her mom and her sister you know that lives I think in Columbus, but they haven't received many updates either. They do have her ex-boyfriend who they believe is a person of interest, but her remains have still not been found. They're still looking. He won't talk. Um, they have charged him officially with murder and kidnapping and rape and uh, a bunch of stuff. Um, but they're still waiting on the trial. I spoke with her today and that's all she could tell me on the update wise. But from my understanding, Tiffany was a mother of three, if I'm not mistaken. And they're all teenagers now. They're actually living with their father and thriving. And Miss Katrina and her siblings are still fighting for justice. We plan on attending the memorial for Tiffany in March because they have declared that she's no longer with us. Now they're just looking for her. Um, they're asking for anybody that has any information. Um, what I know about Tiffany's character is she was a good mother. She was, that, that family is very, very, very close. I mean, you could just see it. It just, just if you met their mom, you would just feel it. I mean, I mean, I'm all right. You, you would just feel it immediately, the warmth that that woman carries. And she's extended it to us, you know. But she was really close with her family. She was very much a good mom. But she also was in the process of going to school to become a corrections officer. And, you know, that right there isn't good, you know, when you got, you're dating someone that's from the that side of the track, you know. And I feel like she ended up being a liability in her case. However, we're still searching for her. And we continuously feel like there's some way, somehow, something going on because, you know, and we things we'll talk about later, the connections. But, and that's, that's what I've got about on Tiffany, you know. They're still celebrating her birthdays and, you know, the, every year when she went missing and, I haven't seen any searches recently because at the there they've searched so much, so many places from LaGrange where he had family, he's got access to property in Meriwether County, he's got access to property in LaGrange and you know there's public records on him and of his previous you know escapades and you know he's always had that one side chick that always bailed him out but you know, justice is coming in this case and little birdies talk and I'm a good listener and you won't even know it, but I eavesdrop as they say, ear hustle. Is that what they call it? Ear hustle. Mm -hmm. And so we're just steadily trying to show love and support and be there for them because they're here for us and just try to fight for justice for Tiffany. It's been way too long and they need to at least have somewhere to go you know, to visit with her and memorialize her in some way. And that's, I think that about sums it up of what I know personally as okay. far as what I'll I'll give you, family. I'll give you a breather for a second. I, th I think that that was a really good point that you brought up, which is that it's an unfortunate yet fortunate um, thing that we found each other because mm -hmm we were all kind of on our different paths to try to get justice for our own families and communities. And um, it's just, it's, 
there, there, I always tell people that our communities are just so amazing. Sadly, it's rooted in trauma and, and not coming from a good place, but, um, whether your family, friends, or just advocating for the pursuit for truth and justice. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a great group of people minus some snakes here and there. Cause you know, they're everywhere, but we squash them very quickly. And we found, we've all found our way to each other and we lean on each other when we need it. We, um, advocate for each other. Um, and, uh, Max here in our comments. I mean, he is a prime example of just taking all of these cases and advocating for all of these women and, and men too, for that matter. And it's just, um, it restores my faith in humanity. Definitely. I'm going to piggyback on your uh, snake situation. That's <laughs> perfect though, because I've got like 17 cats out here ready to pounce. So I'm ready. <laughs> you know, I'm just let them go. And but yeah, <laughs> that was just something to think about. But yes, we appreciate Mr. Max. He's always got um, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Um, it, it's ironic, it's kind of like Miss Katrina, and you know, it's like he'll sense that I'm having a bad day, which can be every day or no days at all. I just won't even be around, and he will reach out to me and just show some love and support and just you know, offer me the the best advice and, and motivation. And, you know, he encourages me to keep going along with all the other people that have reached out. And the last couple of days have been pretty busy, um, but it's coming. So I'm ready when you are. Go, let, let's get into whoever you want to get into next. We still got Olivia and Lauren. I know. And it is so hard to do them separate because they are so, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Olivia went missing in August 2021. She just vanished without a trace. Last sight, her, it was alleged that the last known sighting was on a, a back road outside of Manchester, Georgia on Pebble Brook Road. Um, it was alleged. And, and that's just, I've reason after that later, we spoke with several other locals and they seen her again. So I, you know, I'm kind of on the fence about a lot of them. Uh, and then Lauren was found deceased on September the 18th, 2021. Um, matter of fact, the same day that we were set out to meet, but Olivia was, at the time, a 26-year-old mother of three, two girls and a baby boy who turned a year old a week after she vanished. Um, her grandmother on her dad's side also passed away a week and a half after she vanished. Um, Olivia was very family-oriented, you know what I'm saying? She was always a homebody. She wasn't one to be out and about. But the last two two years of her life you know life happens things fall apart you know the man that she was with who was her two girls father they were really close but hard times hit and if you don't have the support that is necessary and needed it has a tendency to take its toll on a family and in their case that's what happened so they had to split up for a while and then you know how that goes you start one or the other can drift it happens um so it was some heartbreak so she ended up meeting a not so nice person who was like the knight in shining armor in the beginning because Livia was in a vulnerable stage in her life she didn't have a job she didn't have a place to call home she didn't have a car she didn't have a phone she had nothing but her children which made her happier than ever but what killed her every day was the fact that she couldn't stabilize them, you know, their life, they're young. They didn't ask to be brought here and that eat Livia alive. It really did. It tormented her. And that's when she decided ultimately to allow her cousin to take them while she got herself together. Well, the guy that she was seeing wasn't having it, wasn't having it. Olivia had gotten into some trouble with him 
they made a bad decision. They decided to take a weapon and it didn't end well. Olivia ended up going to jail, got a charge, got suckered into, I, what was it? What, 15 years intensive probation, first offense, which I don't know if you know, if you do have any type of issue with substance abuse, that has a tendency to be a really bad idea because if you haven't gotten treatment for that issue, you generally will go back to those same, same thing. And I have proof where Olivia was induced with substances against her will. She didn't know. And, but fast forward on September the 18th, well, actually about two weeks prior to September the 18th, I received messages from a third party from Lauren who was, if I'm not mistaken, she's in her early thirties. I want to say 31, 32. She's, she's pretty young. Her and Olivia used to date that same guy. So she had reached out to me. And the reason I'm going to this date is because that's when it shows that she was found also because Olivia was found not uh, later at the same location so lauren was reaching out to try to tell us what happened and she sent me to this location and we searched it and we reported it because there was some things out there that just didn't look right and you know it didn't smell right literally didn't smell right and i don't know but god stopped me in my tracks when i got to the track and I seen those, what are the fluffy white things that fly everywhere? What are they called? Uh, they ain't dandelions, are they? I don't know what they are. But they were flying everywhere like it was snowing. So it was just like a weird feeling. And that same day, we got a call. Lauren had been found deceased in the ex-tax commissioner's home in Talbot County, Georgia. She was also a mother of one. And she would love family. She was always happy from what I've seen and what I've researched and talking to her friends and listening to Renee, you know, our sister Renee, she is, she advocates for Lauren and they were friends. Renee was Lauren's safe haven. Lauren had a rough life, just like Olivia had a rough life, but the backstories, they still love their families. They trusted, you know, they're going to do no matter what, they're going to find good in you. But about, after I reported that location and Lauren was found a year and four months later, Olivia was found in that same location about a hundred yards from 200 yards to where those dandelions were deep in the woods, just laying on the ground. A hunter found her and they called it in. Meriwether County never went out there. They never took any dogs because the evidence that was out there, we gathered and we turned it in. Um, so then we went on another mission was to get FBI involved because the GBI didn't want to get involved. And then with Lauren's situation, at the time her case is still open. Um, and I do believe that they are looking at her and Olivia's case hand in hand because of the situation because Lauren had been out there. She seemed, you know, she, she was trying to let us know something and her case is open. Just like Olivia's is still open. Her death is still determined, undetermined. <laughs> and Olivia's is what was it? An investigation. Is that what it was? Um, that's all I got from their press release. But Olivia was found in that same area on December the 13th, 2022. And that's the same area that you had searched where you, where you talked about the dandelions flying around yep. that you let, you, you let law enforcement know this. Yes. Yes. They found her, a hunter found her a year and four months later. Mind you, <clears throat> when they contacted me the first time after they found her, I knew because one of Olivia's good friends lives like right there. 
she said, I can't believe that my best friend, my close friend was in, literally in my backyard for over a year and a half and I didn't know it. And her and her husband walked those woods. They found phone. We turned in, never heard nothing about it. They found things out there. We turned in, never heard nothing about it. Um, so then in December, when they found her, they contacted me like four days later, I think. I already knew I was at work and I said, where did you find her? Where did you find the remains? Because they didn't tell me it was her. They said it found remains. They're just waiting. And I said, where did you find her? And they wouldn't tell me. So, of course, I was like, well, if you found her at X place, it's her. Okay. It went on for eight more months. August the 22nd on my birthday, my 48th birthday. I found out that day. Meriwether County had notified the family the day before. And their way of notifying me was going to be a press release on the news and in social media. However, because I have built such a good rapport with certain media outlets, they reached out to me and I'm grateful. Um, as of today, Olivia's case is still open. There's still no persons of interest. She's still not home. She's still in Atlanta and still in Virginia. Um, I was told that they will be releasing her soon. They can't release the location of the exact location of where she was found yet. However, I'm almost there. I found the property owners. All I need is the hunt. God works in mysterious ways. I don't want to go cause any riffraff. I just want to go lay something out there for my baby who laid out there in them woods for almost a year and a half. Evidence slipping away every day just because you didn't do what I asked. So that's where I'm at. That's why I've been a little hostile the last couple of days because I, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like they're going to try to just brush it away. Um, I found out today Meriwether County is more involved than what I would like. And I promise you, I made it very clear that Olivia will not be a suicide, a natural or undetermined. She will be what they did to her and they will pay. And I, I told him, I'm sorry. It, it is what it is. You know, I, I'm, I'm understanding. I'm not going to I'm not going to jeopardize the integrity of the cases by releasing things, but the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So I am going to do some teasers and it's going to make people look because just the, the thing we presented the other day, Mr. Max did. Do you know how many eyes that opened? People said they're terrified because of that. They should be. They should be. You've got three women who were found in the gone within a 15 mile radius maybe 20 and then what 20 more minutes is where natalie i mean come on and that's not that's not talking about the unknown the ones that were passed off as od or whatever you want to call it accident no and can you talk a little bit about um and then, um, Jamie, you could kind of segue it into telling as much as you feel comfortable telling since Sydney's case is still open about the kind of the condition or, or what happened or what you may believe happened to her. Um, Aunt Tammy, can you can you quickly talk about uh, Lauren and how, again, kind of how she was found, where mm -hmm. she was found? And we'll get into the connections of all of them. after. Most definitely. Lauren was actually found at the ex-tax commissioner's home in Talbot County. He had previously been arrested for substance substances. He got busted for a lot of Tic Tacs, Tic Tart. What do we call <laughs> Three Tarts. Tarts. There you go. Oh. But, uh, well, I mean, out of respect for his family, he's no longer with us, but God's law prevailed. But um, 
a li when she was found, it was come it come to light later in a preliminary that she had been tampered with. Um, she had been harmed in a very in a way that I you know what I'm saying like while she was gone already. Her body had been moved. She had been tampered with. They waited almost 48 hours before she was called in. And when they called her in, it was like an old lady got dropped off outside my house by my on the street. But when they got there, she was in his bed with his clothes laying on top of her. Laying, mind you. Um, he was never questioned. He was never brought in. But then about a month and a half, two months later, he was arrested. He was questioned on his involvement in some home invasions locally. And um, that's when they were questioning about other stuff. And he was trying to cop a plea. He was trying to get a plea deal. And his deal was 10 years for his involvement with three bodies but he didn't turn himself in they gave him so long to get his fares in order and he, he never turned himself in um lauren's case is still open i haven't heard any activity except the fact i think they're waiting on what they find for olivia because i have recently had you know god willing some new leads and hopefully it'll open up some doors for them but in the meantime, we're going to keep pushing and doing what we're doing. We have some big things going on this year. Also, um, Tiffany still hasn't been found. And she's not the only one. I mean, we have recent other incidents that's occurred in the same town. And it's really about to make waves. Because I've had several families recently reach out from all over this state wanting to unite and i'm sorry i'm not i'm not going to subtract mr kemp out i'm going to post up on his doorstep if that's what it takes and i really don't care because i know where they live you know my old man's from there come on so it's easy i mean that's what we got to do we got to keep keep there like what you guys are doing right now we have some podcasts into play but i feel like Jamie and I, we've spoken about it. We're going to be doing a lot of advocating and sharing and, and stuff on our own as well because we got to. I mean, it's been it's been four months since we it was confirmed that Olivia, that was her. I don't know, but I know it's gotten quiet unless I'm speaking out. And that's bothering me so bad. You know, it's like, it's tearing me up. And I can't let them forget. That's why I go in the random feed and just post. I love being part of Meriwether County Marketplace. That really stirs the pot. When you got new people coming to the community saying, oh, what's good about the community? You got to unsolve blah, blah, blah for this long. You got several. That's what's good about this community. That you're what was that i seen today matter of fact i think it was what mr max posted about serve that word goes a long way protect and serve yeah so we're protecting and we're serving over here yeah um jamie what would you like to go into depth any more about um after Sydney was found, just do you want to know? <laughs> or do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> just whatever you feel comfortable saying, and that since her case is still open, clearly maintaining the integrity. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you know happened from the start that shouldn't have happened. Um, things that should have happened that they didn't do. Um, you know, it's just why would you give the family member back her necklace that she was wearing when she was found with maggots all over it? Who would do that? 
and then her clothes get burned. Uh, um, and then, you know, you got the sheriff, uh, you know, he got on the news saying that there was a person uh, admitting guilt and that they were close to arresting somebody and then come back with nothing. Five years later. I mean, you know, I would think, you would think that he would be the one to come to our door because, you know, we know him. Grew up, you know, I went to school with his kids. You would think he would be the one to come to our house and show his respects. But no, he was too worried about going meeting the president. Mm -mm. Oh. Yeah. It's was, just... Y'all got to understand this, 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 this girl I'm sorry. has been waiting so long for just, and, and today I touched on it five years is way too long. Her mom, Sydney's mother, every day that lady, she's a warrior, you know, and I admire her. And regardless of what she's she's dealing with, man, she buried her baby, her child, and she has no answers. But yet she'll find time to reach out to me, you know. So she deserves something. And that's why when I met them, they became part of my mission because of her. And then her daughter, who's going to get married on Olivia's birthday. And mind you, I'm the good side. Renee's the bad side of Sydney. You know I've reversed that, right? They actually reverse it. They say I'm the, the bad Sydney. Renee's the good Sydney. So they got two Sydneys. But, you know, it's not the same, you know. And we feel that God sent Miss Debbie that blessing. And he sent us a blessing when he sent her. So I can only imagine. She's got so much built up. And she's finding her voice. So y'all, the love and support that this family's got, I mean, like someone told me, they can Google her name and there's nothing. Like Lauren, except what we, us, as a community, like you were saying earlier, Jen, a community has done. That's all there is. Yeah. And that's a sad, that's a sad reality is, and it's something that we've seen just via, even with Natalie, with various platforms, you know, it's like, there's a lot of people watching on X. There's a lot of people watching on Instagram, but nobody speaks out. And it's like, do we have to do the work for you? Like, do you not see how powerful each of these women's stories are? It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference that they're not a Delta sorority girl who doesn't have any sort of air quote, sketchy past, um, they deserve the exact same coverage. And as all of these other women, you know, like the, the chick that faked her abduction in Alabama a while back and, and here oh, you right. have, right. And here you have actual undetermined causes of death and kind of piggybacking off of what, what you were saying, Jamie, um, and, and even Aunt Tammy, what we've seen with with Natalie's case in particular is, and I I don't walk a fine line, and I'm just going to go ahead and say this with whomever is listening. I will go ahead and say this on the record. I support law enforcement. I have many law enforcement friends. Support all of it. But what I don't support is arrogance, ego, leading statements which is what we've heard in a lot of the interviews, leading statements. Um, with Natalie, the whole thing regarding her adventures with purpose showing up into town. And a lot of people, you know, you get your, oh, you're going down a conspiracy theory. So therefore it makes you a kook or it makes you crazy. Well, not all, I mean, you know, we're, we're looking at public record. We're looking at facts. We're looking at data. We're looking at, um, all of these things. And I don't think that people understand what I think that people don't understand about these areas is that 
the Bermuda Triangle of the South, and this is kind of segueing into all of this where we can kind of loop in how they overlap, is that the South, for anyone that does not love, live in the South, the South is very, you know, small town. Everybody knows everybody. They're gossiping about everybody. You know, like, you know, everybody, uh, you just, you know, everybody, but also you're, you're defensive of your town because again, it's where you grew up and there's that it's Southern hospitality. And that, you know, that kind of is its own bubble and ecosystem. But in my opinion, I am very black and white. What's right is right. And what's wrong is wrong. And when you have law enforcement, particularly, I think we've seen this in all of, all of our uh, mothers that, that are unalive, is that they, and I'll speak for Natalie's community, they branded her as, oh, well, you know, she, she may have been doing this, or she may have been escorting, or she was bipolar. You got to take all these things into account. Okay. They labeled her from day one. They didn't prioritize they subpoenaed records for air quote, let's just say guys on apps that she was talking to, yet they didn't subpoena the records, or at least that we've seen that they didn't turn over to us when they closed the case, which I'd be very curious to find out. They didn't subpoena any of the records of any single person of interest in her case. None. Nobody. They didn't try to get the tower data off of the tower. Um, you know, a car, a hot pink car didn't, doesn't just appear one day after Adventures with Purpose shows up in the town. I don't like, you can say I'm a conspiracy theorist. You can say like big, I believe Bigfoot's around the corner, but that's a coincidence that I will stand behind or a, a conspiracy theory, I should say, that I will stand behind. We've all seen the crime scene photos. We have you know, we have a bit more flexibility since Natalie's case is closed compared to Olivia and Lauren. We know the social connections, which we will get into next. There are some dark clouds that are hovering over these areas and it runs pretty high up and it runs throughout law enforcement. And uh, like we've learned so much about confidential informants mm -hmm. and how one of them has uh, one of the biggest, allegedly, again, in my opinion, allegedly what has been told by many locals, their testimonials, that place where Natalie pulled into was never a party spot. No one in any circle knew her out there. It's pitch black. It's a, uh, ellipti or it's a something eclipse, which would have made it three times darker than normal. Um, you know, her, her, she has multiple missing items. Her hair's in the doorframe of the car. Uh, and you mean to tell me that she just wandered out there because maybe she was high and lost all these missing items. And then her phone goes dark and then an address contact or a, it's called a V card. One of her contacts in her phone was modified at 620. I think it was 624 AM. Uh, -uh. no. And going back to law enforcement, um, again, with what we, what we echoed earlier, you know, we respect law enforcement. We, ins we respect good law enforcement, but you can check your ego at the door because I'm not here to, you know, hear a grown man pity party trying to compensate for what he lacks in his pants. Not my priority. Do your job or get out of it or take your badge off, period. These women were not trash. They were humans with families, with mothers, with sisters, with children, and they deserved so much better. Sorry, you got a little spicy, Jen, tonight. I thought I was done, but apparently not. Um, Aunt Tammy, would you like to kind of talk a little bit about the overlap, the social connections and how they intertwine? Like with Nat, particularly, I mean, with all what four of them really, Olivia, Natalie, Sydney, yeah. and Warren. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a lot of people are, are confused of how Sydney fits into this equation. <laughs> um, well, Sydney's actually was friends with uh, a person of interest that they have not named, um, and actually with him and. 
that's she and, and then her boyfriend was friends with Olivia's boyfriend who was actually Lauren's ex-boyfriend and they're all friends with Tiffany's boyfriend and JL actually used to live over here and used to roommate with Olivia's first cousin I mean it sounds like a whole soap opera but um JL was over here for a while Natalie was over here for a while we have firsthand um statements I witnessed it came out of a person's mouth that thing you know they tied Natalie up in a closet and I'm like well why didn't you do anything about it well later on to find out he was also a person he's now a person of interest and he is our family and he was actually dating Lauren at the time so all of them know each other and they're friends not all of them just socially um a lot of them hang together um matter of fact the last person that sydney was seen with um was also with lauren the last time she was here because his semen was found inside her um and then you have he said he didn't know olivia but he and jc were very good friends to the point where he stayed at my sister's house so why would you deny that um he's still a strong person of interest he's recently out of jail for some unrelated charges and he is back on the prowl so we're we're watching but all their friends are friends and you know with tiffany's boyfriend her connection isn't as big and i feel like her it's a liability but i feel like it could be something because the property that her boyfriend had access to is not three miles from the county jail and i i just find it hard to believe that he got away with caging up girls out there on this property and when you ask law enforcement to go search and they don't it's questionable and you know people don't know that six months before olivia went missing in february another young woman went missing out of manchester and the law enforcement is the one that personally delivered her to the hotel and then she was later on kidnapped so and was found alive in bad shape in california just in case you're wondering um she's trying to get her life on track but they're all socially connected olivia got tied up in it and then she was battling sydney was also seen down at jc's property we have eyewitness statements backing that up um and i honestly believe that her and lauren probably hung together i really do down in talton at some point um we're trying to get to the mistress but she's still luring which is the person that was friends with sydney and um that person of interest her man is currently incarcerated for unrelated charges so there's a huge connection i believe that if i'm not mistaken i seen somewhere where natalie was affiliated with areas on the other side of tobleton and i've always wondered if she ever happened to find herself over in that area because they're like really close to you know it's not far from certain areas down there mock is one of them there was a uh, cockwit where's that at but like certain areas it's not far um and i think they lived in greenville georgia at one time but you know it's not all quinky dinks i don't think yeah. And that, that's something that we've really tried to drive in to get people to understand about these cases and why they deserve so much more digging into and exposure and help, you know, with, with all of them. Because let's face it, you know, every time we get on X, formerly Twitter, and any, any social media platform for that matter, there's all these true crime people. It, I've even, you know, I'm, we're like plugged into some like 
uh, FBI agents, and it's always the next person, always the next person. You, There are so many cases that are unsolved. Cool. And watching the Murdoch case, um, it's like, and I don't watch true crime. It's not something that I'm, for me in particular, like I don't find it to be a healthy thing. So I just don't, I've never watched it really, unless it, unless it was like a documentary or something like that. But um, watching that, and I'm sitting there thinking the whole time, if these people only knew Lauren, Sydney, Kersey, uh, Olivia, Natalie, and, and just to, let me, let me try to clarify to, to, to wrap this back up again. So you, so you guys can understand, um, some of the initials may have thrown you off if you haven't been following the case. So the guy that was dating, Lauren Henderson, who was later found at the tech, at the commissioner's home in Talbot County at the time when she vanished, he is actually Olivia's cousin. He had been staying with JL, who is Natalie's most recent politically connected. And when I say politic, politically connected, his, let me just point this out for you guys. His attorney, he's currently serving 35 years in prison for trafficking, which all started right after all of this stuff started to snowball right after Natalie and he broke up at the very, I think it was December 28th of 2019. When they broke up, Natalie moved out. He was in a um, traffic stop or I can't remember exactly, but the investigating officer detective, I should say that stopped them and went up to the car. It was JL, which is Natalie's politically connected tech ex and Olivia Fowler's cousin who was staying with JL. Uh, Olivia's cousin took off running. So that's a direct connection right there between Olivia and Natalie. And, and, and it's alleged. It, whom is alleged? Let me chime in with you for a second. Okay. Who, it's alleged that his family, and which is my family too, mind you, y'all. These are my right. cousins too. Um, this is my cousin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that he's Freemason. So yeah, it's kind of. Oh yeah, and that that's a whole other conversation about the Freemasons, um, because we've got not only the cop across the street's grandfather. Freemason, that's a whole conversation. Um, but so they, so there's a d direct connection there. And and then this guy that was friends with JL, Natalie's politically connected tech ex, was also um, dating Lauren Henderson at the time. So that's a that's a direct connection. I mean, you, when we get into the conspiracy theory side of it, it's it, it's it's literally information overload. But a lot of this is public record. We have found this by public record. OK, um, JL's attorney had uh, JL made statements in his court transcripts. So let, let's backpedal here. T December 28th, JL and Natalie broke up, right? Natalie had a private Facebook group called My Story Isn't Over, where she started essentially vlogging about her life, the good, the bad, the ugly. She named a much older African-American male that she alleged was her um, mm -hmm. sex offender when she was 15. This guy is allegedly a millionaire and lives out in Pine Mountain. Um, allegedly, right. Um and has a military background. We can get in, there's a whole military swirl, a whole, a whole thing about that. And um, basically he, uh, uh, JL let him and another ex of Natalie's, a younger guy who is actually Facebook friends with Tiffany Foster's, the guy, the main person of interest on Facebook, part of some green world gang, allegedly, Again, air quoting all of this. I don't even know what that is. It's not that big of a gang if, if I don't, you know, if you can't Google it, I guess. But um, he, he he let both of them into Natalie's private group to see what? To see the video where she named him. Hmm. And on top of that, uh, after that, when he started to snowball and catch all of these charges, Natalie moved off. She left Georgia in March of 2020 and she moved to the Gulf Shores area of Alabama. And 
during this time, he found his way out there. He came out there. He bit her on the arm. Um, this is documented. I have to say allegedly for legal reasons, but it's documented in her iCloud timestamp, date stamp, the whole nine. And um, then he came back and he was arrested. He had the trafficking charge. He was arrested. And he, actually what a lot of people may not realize is that he was, JL was incarcerated for a majority of the time that Natalie had the rest of the time that she had been out in Alabama, she moved back to Georgia in May and moved in with her mom. And then all of a sudden a stepsister comes into the picture. And what a lot of people don't know is the stepsister had been previously living with this air quote alleged predator. Mm -hmm. And she asked her out to dinner and they get really close. And so there's a lot of theories, a lot of speculation as to that because they were never close. Um, and is it or would it maybe possible that this predator got her to go get close with Natalie and bait her or, or build her trust? That's been a, a, a talked about theory for quite some time. Well, when JL gets released from or from jail about a week and a half before Natalie vanished, he's out on an ankle monitor. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember with Natalie's case, this is a tech savvy guy. He owns a tech business. He was AP physics in high school. He is a tech guy. If anyone would know how to spoof a location or anything like that, um, it would be him. Well, his counsel, going back to this, his counsel that represented him recently for the um, trafficking charges that he had, guess who he is? He is a Georgia senator mm -hmm. and um, also an attorney who has a law practice over two hours away in North Georgia, who is connected, who his father hired directly. Like it's in the court transcripts that his father requested him. His father knew him. This attorney is married to the governor of Georgia by marriage. And if we want to get even deeper into that, the governor of Georgia comes out to a certain road in Whitesburg, Georgia, which is a very, um, I'm not going to, like, there's some beauty there, I guess. Um, I, there's some nice areas, but um, he goes to a road where there are, air quote, allegedly known traffickers and manufacturers of sweet tarts. And he goes out there annually to quell hunt. So I guess they just blow past that. I mean, coincidence, right? That's what all of this is. Well, don't, don't forget, don't forget, Governor Kemp did show up in Talbot County the week Olivia, uh, excuse me, the week Lauren was found. The following isn't, isn't his wife also the head of like the anti-human trafficking? Mm -hmm. Allegedly, because I ain't seen no action for real. There's a lot of crazy stuff, you guys. There's a lot of crazy stuff that's happening around here. Oh, and I just, to just throw, this is actually a fact. I'm not going to say this is allegedly because we can prove it. And if someone wants to open that can of worms, go right on ahead. Um, they talked about with law enforcement with Natalie that there was a four and a half minute call that she had with a air quote, John out of state. And turning out this John that she had been texting with and communicating with, I will go on record and say that it was Natalie was on some sugar daddy sites, was a Department of Homeland Security employee from Virginia. You want to know who sits on the committee for the Department of Homeland Security? <laughs> there is also a politician that lives local in those areas. Um, all of his district is the whole Bermuda Triangle of the South. He was an incorporator on JL, Natalie's politically connected tech X's business, where Natalie owned 5% shares. These are just things that make us go, hmm. Yeah, Homeland Security was over here today. There's some crazy stuff going on, you guys. I'm wondering if it was the guy from Virginia. You never know. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. what are, are, are they that are, are, my question is, is we've had some crazy things happen, um, especially with the Lake House X 
Um, I can, I'll go ahead on record here. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I had a phone conversation or I, I had a conversation with the Lake House X. And one morning I got a voicemail. I didn't answer it because I didn't recognize the number, but a name popped up. The name that popped up, I Googled and she is a Department of Homeland Security, mm -hmm. like chief of staff or something like that. I can't, I, I, I know the name now. I'm not going to say it, but that came through and I'm like, is this a sign? Is this a coincidence? Is this someone tapping his phone to like, listen in and there's some glitch in the matrix. Like these are, these are real events that I have screenshot and sent to numerous, all of my powerful connections to say, Hey, if, if I vanish, y'all know where to look. Right. And I even, I think I sent it to you Aunt Tammy as well. When that happened, mm -hmm. there's some weird stuff going around. These oh, areas. Yeah. I, I still can, uh, you know how you could pull up your Wi-Fi connections. And when I went and spoke with the FBI, I actually went to them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but every time I'm at home, I can pull it up and their van is somewhere in the vicinity. That's why I got my own Wi-Fi, you know, and try to. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm like, I've, I've seen it ever since this happened. It didn't just. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you when it showed up. It was after. JF, my cousin, who was Lauren's boyfriend, JL's friend, it was the day he came over here. One of the first time he came over here after all this started happening. It was fun. It was so weird because it popped up in the Wi-Fi and, and it had been on mine the whole time until I got this new phone. So I'm like, you brought the Fed to my house, <laughs> you know, which I talked to him, you know, when they feel like answering but it just it, it's weird like you said it's weird you go like i've searched locations certain locations many times more than others and because i feel like i've missed something yeah and i know that there was one particular lo location and it was so weird to me and i think i even messaged y'all about it um me and renee and Ron was out searching one day, and I think you worked that day. And we went down on King Gap Road, which is a spot I've went to a thousand times. And this time, lo and behold, laying on the ground was Freemason hat. <laughs> oh gosh! Yeah, the hat and, and the and, and the little all and dead dead doll heads all See. in the yard, man everywhere when i say not no two or three they were everywhere renee was getting freaked out because you know she's old country girl but she'll be carrying it she's like <laughs> ron got their hands on their on their pieces you know and i'm just picking up the doll him like these some idiots you know they some idiots that live here because i grew up with these idiots and <laughs> right. you know and now they think they got one but they're dating one of my idiot cousins so I mean, come on. So it's just well, gonna, it's all gonna play out. Free. I mean, okay, not to be taboo about it, but Freemasons are a real thing. I always direct people to if you've never seen the first season of, of True Detective on HBO, mm -hmm. it's very similar in in a sense to a lot of these cases. Um, we know that Freemasons are out there. I'd be very curious to find out to dig more into there to see who all else is part of certain lodges because. What we can say that we know um, the landowner that Natalie was found on is a Mason. He lives in a city where his lodge is that JL, Natalie's politically connected tech ex, his grandfather is from. He was a Mason, right? <laughs> okay. The cop across the street that walked the roads with the detective on September 11th. Reminder, Natalie was found on October 6th. They mm -hmm. didn't spot her. They noted in the supplementals that they searched every driveway, every cutout, every whatever. And mind you, he lives across the street. Never saw, smelled, turkey buzzards, nothing. His grandfather is a master mason. Um, the, this is public record and see that 
for the record, Freemasons, if you're watching this or if you do watch this, stop putting that in obituaries because it's public record and I can just copy and paste that somewhere. So stop doing that. Stop sending me friend requests. <laughs> I've already been told I was pr protected by my cousin who allegedly is a Freemason. And not again, you know, to play devil's advocate, not all of them are bad. We're not insane. I'm not insinuating that any of that. I, holds know, I do know that um, over this way there, there was, I don't know if they, I know there's one here in Harris County, a large, and I know there's one in Meriwether County. I just don't know where that one is because one day I was go, I was driving and I seen the sign that said something about for rent and I was going to check it out. And I went down this road and when I got down there, I freaked out because there was just so many men that was like, like dressed in all black and these these weird I mean and I, I easily backed myself out of there but it freaked me out and I I think it and I'm not gonna lie I want to say that that used to be in the cove which is the for the area where they said Olivia was allegedly walking towards which we have family down there and but you know I've I've read I've done some research, Jen, and it's pretty interesting. They they're more bad now than they were good. Well, and they protect their own. They're basically a bunch of reject frat boys that like to, you know, pretend that they are. And you know, that that is that's something that I looking at the psychology of it. I try to get very in, in depth with the psychology of it, because if you're not from Georgia, you're not from Georgia. If you're not from, you know, Heard County, you're not from Heard County. Same with Meriwether County. It's very isolated, but there's, there's some overflow there, but you know, and it, this also goes into the potential, I mean, hopefully not, but potential corruption as well. And the good old boy network and ghost face. I mean, you've got the, the, the ghost face gang we've heard mention. I mean, Natalie's mm -hmm. biological father who she had, for those that don't know, Natalie's mother raised her. She, the other side of the family, though, I do believe that some of the siblings or I should say half siblings did love her and do want to find justice for her. Um, a lot of them are not great. Uh, seen their court records and Natalie, it was Natalie, her mother and her boys. And um, we partner exclusively with Elaine. Elaine entrusted us to, you know, to be Natalie's voice in that sense. And that has been something that we've held very closely and, and we're very determined to do. Um, but the corruption, it's not something that, that, we want to entertain. It's not like, oh yeah, we're, we're just looking for it. We just want to nail some corruption. That, that's not what we're here for, but that's another topic kind of dovetailing off of Freemason. Yeah, that's, a, that's another segment. That's a whole other segment. That, that's I, on the corruption in our searching. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's really just wild. Um, you've got, you've got the utter at the very bare minimum law enforcement ego and thinking they've got it. And, you know, I, Aunt Tammy, I always go back to, I always go back to when Nancy Grace interviewed you and asked you, I always say this whenever I need, like, mm -hmm. whenever someone tries to, you know, throw me a curveball, whether it be like a forensic analyst or a criminologist or whomever and say, well, what if, and I'm like, You've got Nancy Grace, Miss Bulldog herself, telling Aunt Tammy, why are you out searching mm -hmm. ring for ring camera footage? Meriwether County, like Harris County, like Talbot County, like Heard County, are not inundated with calls. We know what these officers do. We have little birds all over that county. We know where they eat lunch. You know, we know all of this stuff. And it's not that, you know, it's just... These are people that are scared to speak up to the in the public, but they 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 will shout like or they'll sing like a canary behind the scenes. Oh, he was so and so was in here today. I served this table of DEA agents, and they met with this CI. This is his name. They allow him to do this. There is so much that we have learned, and again, call it speculation. It's alleged. 
Can we prove it? No, but these people know what's going on. And I think that's where a lot of people underestimate Southerners. We're all up in everybody's business. We know, we, we know, or we can find out real quick. That's and, for sure. That is for sure. You can find real quick. We done found out so much and learned so much and uncovered so much things that we didn't want to uncover. Um, but it is what it is. And, you know, it, it's time. It's way past time. This is not just happening. It's been going on for years. Um, I even mentioned today uh, about a young woman who went missing back in 1995 in the cove. And, and never been found or i mean gone vanished without a trace and her family is still searching for her out of the cove the same area same road so i don't i don't get it i don't so it's been going I, on for a long time i i truly believe that with all of this and i do believe that some of it is more you know you've got ground level you've got i can only speak to I'll just speak for Natalie in particular. A lot of people, when they look at her case or maybe read a few articles and they watch the Adventures with Purpose videos and they clearly, first of all, let me just point this out. Elaine, Natalie's mother, has recently reached out to Sam, the adventure man with Adventures with Purpose because he met her. He hugged her mm -hmm. and their story changed the next day. They got out of town. We want to know why. Natalie's mother deserves to know why. What did they tell them? Um, but uh, totally forgot where I was going with this. I but, watched that episode today. Yeah, and a, a lot of people they just take it as face value. And what and we're they were talking so highly about her, but yet you can't be real honest with her. You were talking about how great the family is, and. And just, you know, how, but then you, you can't just be honest and tell this lady what she deserves and what law enforcement are too weak and, and idiotic to tell us. Well, because there's in my, and this is just my opinion. I think that there's something else going on. I, the fact that I've spoken to someone who has given me names of this person is a, is a confidential informant. Mm -hmm. Here's how it works. He yep. works with this guy who is a former DEA agent who is now a local PD. They set people up. Then he goes out of town. This person is actually connected to someone close in Natalie's orbit. So um, uh, that's kind of that's kind of the situation with JC. Uh -huh. I remember I remember that angle. With that is his, his world. And he had everybody convinced that it was Olivia and not him. I remember. And I've been. I've been slick sharing certain messages, trying to just, I, that's the truth. He was, he was a CI for the DEA of Meriwether County. And it, it's not a secret. Everybody knows it. He had call logs and he's got laptops that just vanished without a trace along with the vehicle that he had when Olivia went missing. And I, I'm just, you know, and then the DEA gets moved to the same county where Carlisle's arrested for mail theft. I mean, they created, they committed unemployment. There's just so unemployment fraud. It's yeah. all about money. It's all about sex and it's all about drugs. And Power. I really don't care. You know, I don't care. My niece and none of these, none of these women deserve this. None of these men, because these men are even getting lured in. I mean, they're letting them know either you're going to get out here and do this work for me, like be in the muscle like the one MB guy that's a person of interest. We believe he was put up to doing these things. We don't yeah. believe he just woke up and said, hey, I'm going to go not do this. I mean, I don't believe that. And I just I just know that it's, it's bigger. And when the own law enforcement says you'll never find her. And when he says you're going to end up like her and, you know, stuff like that, you're making yourself suspect, first of all, not to mention the hundreds of receipts that we have where you've been named a person of interest but and then your life i mean you know we've seen it with natalie's stepsister that the events that we do in our life can really tell a story you know how we sell our property how we move how we relocate 
you know, that tells the story of your life. So I, I literally sit here and watch someone try to, well, actually sell property and merchandise that they just purchased because it was time to pay back a loan that they fraudulently got. So, and that's when things started getting, going missing, money, home invasions. So, you know, you're going to go do the work. And that's what happened, if I'm not mistaken, right, with um, the with Olivia's ex, Jace, we'll just refer to him as JC. Isn't that what happened with um, someone going over there and he sold the truck? I think it was in the, the Vanish podcast, one of the... the, he, the posted girls. It. he posted that truck online. He posted it on Facebook not, not long after Olivia went missing. And I seen it, of course, and I commented on it. And he's like, don't you do that, blah, blah, blah. And he took it down and he just kind of was quiet and he kept the truck. But then out of the blue, it disappeared. We found out later he sold it to, uh, I believe, Chop Chop in Atlanta um, because that's where we were told it was sold. We looked it up to where the bill set, you know, you could look that up and track the tag and the VIN number and all that information. And the last location was in Atlanta around mm -hmm. where he was staying when he allegedly was doing some work, which was, is considered a, a bad area in Atlanta. Yeah. And there was two days after Olivia vanished, he was seen at his, at his brother's where he was staying with the back of his truck open, you know, and he had told me this was before we stopped. I basically just stopped communicating with him because I felt like he was sending me on wild goose chases. Cause I mean, it was just crazy how he was just, he would message me as soon as I would get to one location, telling me to go to another. And I'm like, come on, dude, you're not going to try. You're not going to work. It's not going to work. He was trying to cover himself. And because I had not retrieved all those messages at the time. So I was really blind. You know, I was trying to give the guy the benefit of the doubt, trust that he was being honest. But when you told me a lie four different ways, I, I start, I'm pretty, I may look dumb. I may be from the South and come, whatever people stereotype us to be. But I mean, I'm just saying. So he just, I don't know. He, my cousin contacted him was like, where are you going? And he told me when Olivia went missing, I said, you got something to do. Cause he was allegedly out searching, but he was really watching me. And I said, so what's your plan? And he said, like, I ain't going nowhere until I lay my eyes on her. Well, that Sunday night, I get a call saying, Carlisle's loading up his vehicle. I contact him, just played it off. Hey, what you got going on? I'm getting ready to pull up. You said I could come down there anytime I wanted to search your property. So I'm getting ready to pull up. Oh, I'm getting ready to go out of town to work. You told me you weren't going out of town. Your girlfriend is missing, who you so love and madly in love with. Three, four weeks later, the vehicle was gone. And he was hiding and thought he was hiding. But we found him and we were recording him. And then he got arrested not long after for stealing people's mail. Has anyone tried to, um, and this is something that we've wondered about, um, and Jamie, I definitely like to hear, hear from you here as well. Um, has anyone, I know JC is uh, regarding Olivia is currently incarcerated as well as, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the initials of, uh, the cousin, um, JF. J, J, we got a lot of J's, JF, and then JL, as it relates to Natalie, is locked up. Um, ha, has anyone, and even for, for, for you, Jamie, um, the main person of interest, or who you deem a person of interest, has, has communication gone completely silent? Has anyone tried to talk to him? And then the same for you, Aunt Tammy. Has anyone tried to reach out to him in jail? Oh, no, he's reaching out to people. Hmm. He's telling people that Olivia was found with no teeth. How did he know that? Hmm. Yeah, what about and that they they uh, burned her fingerprints or something. But I that's a lie, I believe. But I don't know. I'm waiting. I'm waiting still 
um, to know. <laughs> but yeah, he's talking. He has tried to reach out to some people, um, but and they I, only a couple that I know of, and they actually told me. But I'm pretty sure he's not anybody on my side. I don't think. But I will tell you this: him and my sister were communicating for a very long time still. Actually, up till he got locked up, he actually called her collect a few times from jail, from prison. So, hmm. I mean, she did get 45 cash out cars mailed to her house. I don't know. That's strange. What about you, Jamie? Have you had any communication with um, any of the or the, the person of interest or the or anyone that you deem as a person of interest? Only when you ask question. Yeah. Only when I messaged them. Yeah. Um, Jamie, just to get back into Sydney here a little, a little bit. Um, I know that we've talked about there's a common what what we all feel that there there are certain overlapping scenarios, common denominators. Uh, whether it be you know for them it was like fraud or corruption running. You know, there's just just whole whole business, if you will. Um, do you believe, and I, I think that this would be really important for you to tell anyone that's listening into this. I remember you saying this on another live that we did about Sydney had made this statement to your mom. Uh, can you, can you just. Yeah. That um, she knew too much um, that she was going to end up being killed. And the day that she went missing, and uh, she talked to my mom and she kept on wanting to tell her something, but never got the chance to. And that's that's something that we're hearing across the board. Um, as far as Heather Turner, she was getting ready to leave her husband. Natalie. And that was Olivia. She was getting ready to go to Alabama for about, I think it was, she was going away for her treatment, anxiety and depression. And when she was a, got out of the day before, she, while she was locked up the 10 days prior to her going missing, I talked to a few of her cellies and they even said that Olivia was acting very strange, saying she had to go pay a deed for someone. And she was real nervous and scared, you know, real like scary. And, and I mean, Olivia tells everybody, you know, that she loves, she genuinely loves that she loves them. And she tells, says it often. But when you say it every other sentence, I love you with all my heart, it's like she was saying something. And a lot of people don't know. They say that Olivia left letters, that she wrote letters. I believe only one of them was written by her. And I believe it was written while she was incarcerated at one time. And I just believe that JC passed it off as something. Because all three letters were wrote in different inks. But one of the letters was destroyed. And then the one letter was pen and marker and, and it just it did it sounded nothing like Olivia and if it was she was in distress and I spoke to people that were there and the, at the time that all this allegedly happened and they said her mind frame was she was she was worried about something she was anticipating something because she told she's told us that people that she knew too much I've seen messages where Can you can you can you explain this? Because this was something that I had no idea about, but I found fascinating just having, well, morbidly fascinating, I guess, learning more about this. So let's just let's take a, a hypothetical here. I'm in the sweetheart scene, we'll call it that because I don't know what you can say on on YouTube, but I'm in the sweetheart scene. I'm dating this chick. The chicks, what did they, they use them to run either the sweet tarts or collect money and payment? Can, do you, can you give any more context well, to how it works? Or well, could in, in Olivia's situation, from what I'm understanding, um, they would have the girls lure the guys in to get them into the scene to start buying, buying more. And then eventually the DE agent would come in and bust them up. And then his bondsman would, but would get them out and they coordinated because that's how the young lady disappeared. 
six months prior to Olivia. It was because it's ironic that they're all on paper of some type, whether it's parole or probation, and they're all it's all through the same DEA and the same parole officer and um, the same bail bondsman that gets them out because this one bail bondsman does multiple counties. So I feel like that they're they're manipulating, luring them in, getting the women to, you know, and I I I know for a fact that. They they pimp them out. They traffic them. It's all a business. It's all a business. And I it's have, yesterday I received a message from someone that told me about a guy. I had heard his name. I know of him. Don't know him personally, but he was one of those guys that would would pay for him, you know, over there. And the ironic thing is he has a house on Pebble Brook Road. So now I'm in the process of trying to track that down because I feel like that day Olivia was seen allegedly around 1030. But then when we talked to those other witnesses that seen her that day, it was later on that evening. And I just don't feel like she would have been out in the element all day. So I feel like there was a house, you know what I'm saying? So, and I do know that one of her cousins, other cousins, who's a person of interest, I know she hung with her some and she stayed down at a house down there by where Olivia was found. And her family's property, which is my, my family was searched and they found evidence of human remains. Well, and then another odd coincidence, and I know we've touched on this before, but when you were mentioning the, the woman who went missing uh, before Olivia I know who you're talking about. We won't name her because she is in the healing process, right. has an amazing sister. But I remember speaking to the sister very early on about possible connections because Natalie had still not been found at the time. You guys can probably Google it and figure out missing woman from Georgia ends up in San Diego. She had relocated um, from Pensacola. Gulf Shores, Natalie <laughs> um, area up to like Greenville, uh, mm -hmm. Georgia. Okay. That's actually that Greenville Pine Mountain. That's actually where the alleged predator, and I have to say alleged, but alleged predator owns two properties. Um, Mind the you, also Tiffany's uh, person of interest is got access to the same property. Yeah. Um, the backstory on that young lady uh when she moved what what how how it went about that she met these people because like you i mean i spoke with the sister and i we still do um so proud that baby girl is healing and doing great but um she was i guess her and her baby daddy got in an altercation and i don't know if it's like this everywhere but normally when that happens they se separate both of them well, instead of them having him go somewhere else who has a home here, who has established a home and has two kids, her two kids, they would basically, they took her by herself to a hotel in Manchester, which is a known bad hotel where people go and, you know, do stuff, took her there and there was two men in a car lured her to to mess with him because yes she had fought addiction in the past but she was past that that's why she moved to georgia to be back with her family to rebuild what they had lost well they had gotten an altercation i don't know what happened so when she went back home i think it, they have to stay apart like 24 hours and when she went back home everything went back to normal a couple of days later those same men showed up renting property next door and they befriended the children first would buy him candy would buy him gifts and because the the, the boyfriend the husband was gone all the time well one morning at four o'clock in the morning she vanished and yeah. he was there in the bed and I mean, it's and, and I think this goes this gets into definitely human trafficking, because I think what 
this has always been my focus has been more anti-human trafficking. Mm -hmm. She was, you guys need to understand the psychology of this. Like she is a recovering addict. She relapses due to a traumatic event. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she is passed off to this guy, um, throws her phone out of the window basically. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. was, she has this, a very small dog that she's able to, somehow they let keep with her and mm -hmm. um she's but here's how trafficking works they took her to the midwest and then she's passed off to another guy she's drugged she's inebriated at this point she sees the second guy in her state of mind as a savior in a mm -hmm. sense i know it may not make sense for you and i being sober and not inebriated but at that point, she's trafficked to San Diego where she's filmed. Um, her sister, I mean, goes through freaking Wonder Woman hoops and links, goes out there, finds her. She initially didn't want to come home because that's what people don't understand is that like they do the grooming and predatory behavior. And I mean, it could be anywhere from a pimp to a predator. They they use these psychological tactics along with drugs, sweethearts or whatever you want to call them to gain control and tactics and stuff like that over their victims. Well, thank goodness she, you know, her sister went back out there, um, had a conversation with, a, if I'm not mistaken, it was a lady on the boat. She had to go back out, get her. She was beaten. Like she was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, I think she had to go back out one more time to get the dog. She, but uh, she had contacted Meriwether County had told her that she didn't want to be found. She didn't want to be home. Right. And they had found her out there uh, by going through kids class and kids class got back out there. And then she had to file a missing, missing persons report in San Diego. And when, when, her sister asked, I just want to see proof that she don't want to come, come home. Just let me see her condition. And if she's good and tells me without a shadow of a doubt, she don't want to come home. I'll let it be. And then they went back and they couldn't find her. And so she reached back out to that, that community and they went back out. And that's when they found her in the homeless district. And she was like three days from being shipped off mm -hmm. out of the, you know, off over the border. But um, like you said, her sister, found, they found her. They tracked her down. She boarded a plane. She dressed like a homeless lady, walked down that strip until she found her. She found her and the dog. And they were in really bad shape, though. Really bad shape. And she, she I remember her telling me, I can't remember specifics, but when she found the dog, it was on a like a houseboat or a boat. Yep. He was telling me the, some a story about the woman that was mm -hmm. on the boat was mm -hmm. telling her. I mean, I pray that one day she will have the strength yeah. um, to speak I mean, because that's what, uh, and I can say for Natalie, people can generalize Natalie and they can say, oh, she was doing this. Natalie was a warrior. She was abused and manipulated by men who could not control her, by predatory men, by um, vindictive females. And there's one in particular. Um, and she was a free bird. You could not control. That does not bode well for Southern men. Um, and Natalie, when she started speaking out in her and via her vlogging in her, her uh, private Facebook group, this is when stuff started to snowball for her. She wanted to help the next person. She, she says it in so many videos. I just want to help someone along the way. Um, unfortunately, our missing and murdered moms are no longer here. But I pray that one day maybe our girl, you know, who we're talking about here, maybe she will get the strength. Maybe not. And that's, that's, it's, it's her story, her journey, her healing. But, um, we have to start having these conversations. I mean, we are in the era of disclosure. You've got the Epstein stuff. You've got the Weinstein stuff. We know that these things happen and they're happening in our backyard. And um, for Natalie's community, what's really catapulted us is that we've had so many locals 
say, I don't want this to go on, but I'm scared to speak up. I don't know what to do because I live here. You know, I probably know some of these people or I've seen this and it's like, how do you fight that? How do you fight that? Um, and the same goes for, for, I mean, I know aunt Tammy, you have your thoughts on Meriwether and, and mm -hmm. Jamie, you have, you definitely have your thoughts on, um, your counties and it's like enough is enough. You, you, these people are the ones that go to church every Sunday and then are putting on Mason cloaks and freaking doing, or you, you get where I'm going here. Like, it's just, it's insane that this is a reality, but it's also just, it's like people in those communities have become so numb to seeing, oh, it's just another missing girl. It's just another OD, an undetermined cause of death. It's, it, they normalize it and that is not normal. It's not normal and it's not fair for the, for the victims in your communities. And it's not fair for the people that want to let their kids go outside without fear of being abducted and trafficked mm -hmm. or killed or, or initiated in a gang, you know, um, it's just what aunt Tammy, I mean, you have really become like, I, I sometimes look to you and I'm like, that's, that's aunt T mother, you know, aunt Tammy Teresa over there. Yeah. I mean, you have really put yourself on the front lines and um, you want, I really see you at you as being one of, one of the front runners. I think Max is, is right there behind you, right alongside you. I'm trying to get him off over here. I'm trying. <laughs> he, he's, he, I don't know what it is. He just, he needs to come on out and come on out and join us. And, and I'm well, telling you, he just looking at him is intimidating as hell. So I promise you. Oh yeah. He's good people. He is good people. What, what, it, what are your priorities for? Um, and then I'll, I'll bring that over to you, Jamie. What, what are your priorities for ensuring not only that Olivia and Lauren and um, Sydney get justice in 2024, but what are your plans? M maybe more so with you Aunt Tammy, because I know you're, you're just out there like of really, trying to do something more big picture. Yeah, I I have my mind is like all over the place because I I personally relate to a lot of these issues, not only trafficking, um domestic violence, um you know, just being treated badly all around, just I've I've been up close and personal myself with these issues so it's personal and then when it happens to you but i would love to see our moms not die in vain i i would like to see like i, I make it a mission if i see a young a young female that is, that's struggling out there and on on social media or wherever they don't got to know me from a can of paint but I'm going to come in there and I'm going to give them some inspiration and let them know I'm proud of you. You know, you, you can do this. You know, you can fight whatever battles you're fighting because, I mean, nobody knows what a person is going through. Me personally, we're going to get justice first and foremost. Um, but I feel like Olivia's house is coming somewhere. I don't know where. It's probably going to be my house somewhere and it's going to be about 15, 20 rooms. Okay. And if any of them need somewhere to go, they can come on and we can just chill and cuss and fuss and, you know, whatever. Just be ourselves and be who we are. But I'm planning on getting involved in a lot of advocacy work. I'm looking into private investigating even, believe it or not. I think somebody's got to we don't have anything here i mean if, if if any of these young women need somewhere to go at a drop of a hat if they don't got their family support then they're they're stuck and that's how they end up gone and gratefully some families do have that support and you know sydney was so blessed and you know natalie was so blessed and tiffany um blessed and I, I can appreciate that, but I'm not going to stop. Y'all y'all going to see Olivia for a long time, and you're going to see all the other Olivias out here because I couldn't save her, and I couldn't save Lauren. So 
I promise you, I'm going to save a bunch. And I'm going to make it my mission in life to make every predator pay. I don't care what noise it makes. I, I don't care. I'm not scared of jail. What they going to do? I mean, I, I, I just don't see me sitting here and just going on with life like this never happened to me and me turning off a light. I want to be available to families if they need it, to young women and children too. I mean, I, I want to, I see myself speaking publicly about this, telling their story and telling my own story because I tell everybody else's story, but I don't tell my own. Yeah, that's so true. And Sydney, you know, I, Jamie, I just, I, I know that we all feel for her because she, and, and Lauren as well, just, they did not receive the same amount of, of, um, coverage, you know, like Natalie and Olivia and, and so many others, Gabby Petito, you know, you've got all these other cases where it's just like they pick certain ones and get drawn into that, but all of them have such a powerful story. And I've asked you this before, um, but for Sydney, she, her being such a bright light, right? Which is something that we all say. It's a very cliche saying, but these, all of these women were bright lights. Mm -hmm. um, what are the main reasons that you will keep pushing forward on behalf of her and her, her family, your family and her kids? Like, like first off, the main reason I'm going to keep going is for her mama and for her kids and her grandkids, because they deserve to know what happened to her and deserve to get justice regardless of how and, bad it is right like human is human you know like you said you shouldn't be labeled you should um do your job and um uh, treat I, I i think every crime scene should be treated as a homicide until proven otherwise yeah you know yeah and you know, Sydney mattered. They all mattered. And I would like for this year to be the year they all get justice and answers. Yeah, they and that's something I can speak to. I mean, I, I mentioned before I've met Kat. We've both met Natalie's sons and Natalie's youngest son. Um, he lashes out like he's a bit more extroverted and and kind of like he gets angry and then he shuts down and and but like he's the sweetest kid and you know hugging him was like hugging natalie and 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 the older son super smart i mean and he, gosh he looks so much like natalie i mean it, it it gave me chills just to see him um but he has a pain behind his eyes and he just shuts off. He just closes down and I'm glad that he has a good family unit support system, but these babies, they're not babies necessarily anymore for all of them. They, uh, they, they need to know what happened to their mothers. And I don't say that in a morbid way. I say that in a way that these tragedies happening to them, their mothers has now and will now forever change the trajectory of their life. And it's very crucial that they are, you know, in my opinion, should have a very strong family unit therapy, uh, whatever, because it's, it's, this isn't just like, you know, you're losing your favorite grandmother that passes away at 98 or something like that. This is a traumatic event for that's happened for children that don't have answers and they deserve to have answers and you know i i, I try not to bring bring the, this subject up um because it's sensitive to me olivia has three children three small children her oldest just turned eight last october and the fact that i'm not a part of their life makes it even more traumatic 
I didn't just lose Olivia. I lost them too. So, them not knowing. I mean, right now, they just think she left. You know? I know Emma goes to counseling twice a week. I mean, she's eight. Her and her mom was real close. But just them thinking that she just disappeared. And now when they find out about their mom, what they can remember, because her son isn't going to remember anything. He wasn't even a year old when she disappeared. He doesn't know her. But when they look on Google, now when they get older, who Emma's already pretty sure active on a phone, um, they're going to Google their mama one day. And, and that's not how I want them to see it, you know? I want them to know the truth, that she loved them with everything in her. So I've been working on some things myself to maybe one day, if I get the chance, I'm going to make sure they have it. One yeah. of them being this little necklace. It's for her oldest. It may be raggedy or whatever, but her mama wore it all the time. So, I mean, they need, they deserve something because right now they just think she dropped them off. And that's not the case. Yeah. And and that that's something that we've seen with <clears throat> Natalie's community. And I, I think that that's something that really bothered a lot of us that have been core members in Natalie's community from day one is that you had, I think what really bothered me the most was seeing other women attack her and also slap that label of, oh, she wasn't a good mother or she wasn't this. And, and we're like, uh, first of all, we have, for one, the entire case file now. Um, we have all the contents from her phone. We have all these photos and videos. That girl loved her babies. She loved her sons. If you look at her Facebook, it's her mom and her sons. And then some random, you know, sorry, excuses for men here and there. But she loved her boys. And that's what we try to do. We have to get a little spicy, clearly, to, you know, poke the bear here and there. But we try to honor, we've run that by Elaine as well. We we really try to honor their mom's um, legacy and, and show that she loved her boys. And just as Olivia loved her babies and, and Sydney loved her babies and her grandbabies even, um, uh, it, 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 these were, and that's just kind of what I would end my portion of what I really need to say. Is, and that's that when you strip everything away, when you take it all down to take it back to basics, these were humans and nobody on this earth. I don't care if you're a Freemason. I don't care if you're a corrupt cop. I don't care if you're a jealous ex-boyfriend. I don't care who you are. Has the right to dictate whether someone leaves this earth or not. It's not their right. You don't like someone, you're angry, that's fine. Go on about your life. But there's some evilness that needs to be behind bars to answer for these heinous crimes. And including, I didn't mean to leave out, Susan, I saw your comment there about um, Heather Turner, who also has, I believe, two kids. Um, Susan, if I'm not mistaken, she has two kids that's now living with the man who many believe was the cause of uh, Heather Turner's demise. Um, and again, all from different socioeconomic backgrounds, you know, Sydney, Natalie, uh, Heather Turner, um, they all come from different backgrounds, but they're humans. These were, these were people that Aunt Tammy loved. Aunt Tammy raised Olivia, you know, um, Sydney and Jamie sisters. Natalie, bless her heart, was just trying to look for love in all the wrong places. Um, I think they all did. They all did. I mean, they all did. I mean, and it's unfortunate. I mean, I'm guilty of that myself, but, you know, it's just unfortunate that they ran into these dirt bags. And now they get to meet me, so that just makes it even greater. Well, we keep pressing on and keep keep their stories and 
their names out there. Um, it's, it's just so important that we keep telling their stories and keep their memory alive. And, you know, that's one thing we've, we've told Elaine because Elaine let us in, she, she confided in us and let us sit in, you know, we did the presentation for the DA's office. We sat down with them and, um, I told her, I said, Elaine, like, this is your daughter. It's no one. I don't care what Heather or whoever else on Facebook thinks of your daughter and says that, oh, you should just let her rest in peace. She, she's found, she's buried. It is what it is. I said, do you want to find answers for your daughter? Do you want to keep digging or, do, or should we just let this go? And she said, I want answers. She deserves answers. And I told her, I said, well, then we will fight until we get those answers. And if there's ever a point that you want to stop, we will stop because that's your daughter. Mm -hmm. That's your daughter. But until then, we, we will keep going and we will, just like all of us, we will go full speed until we have answers. Yeah. So I know it's getting late. Kat, I'm so sorry. You've been in the background just listening this whole time. She probably sleeps. <laughs> it's okay. You know, um, it could be your child. It, it could be your friend. It could be your aunt, your niece. That could be the next victim, you know, and it, I mean, it's got to stop. It really so, does. It really does. It really For does. the next person to, you know. So, Miley, get some sleep. I see 3 a.m. there. You definitely need to be in bed. Hopefully, you can sleep after hearing all this. Um, make one heck of a, a six part. I, it couldn't even be a six part series. It'd have to be a recurring series at this point with all these stories. Um, we just, we we just scrape the surface, right? Just, oh, this is just scraping the surface. Um, I'll just close out and then let Aunt Tammy and Jamie close out here. Um, we greatly appreciate you on behalf of Natalie's community and we'll say for Heather Turner um, as well, being here and sharing their stories, sharing this live, uh, hashtagging, you know, justice for Natalie Jones, justice for Olivia Fowler. You can find us on social media. Pretty much all of our handles are justice for Natalie Jones. Um, these, these women's stories deserve to be heard. They deserve to be told and they all deserve justice. Um, and I, I just appreciate you all for listening in to this and hopefully we get some answers soon. Aunt Tammy. I mean, I feel the same way. I'm, I'm grateful for all the love and support because yeah, some days it takes a toll on your mental health, but you know, the love that we have for them, you know, just kind of trumps it, you know, because they deserve answers. We deserve answers. We all deserve answers. The future Olivia's, Lauren's and Sydney's and Natalie's and Tiffany's deserve and Heather deserve answers. So just thank you. Please share, follow, comment, like, show some love, your prayer support. We're grateful. And if you see us out and about, Feel free to come up and, and speak because I'm not shy. Because when I tell one story, I'm going to tell them all. So that's why I'm always kind of dry because I'm always <laughs> telling it. And, you know, I probably sound redundant, but it is what it is. Because I remember not so long ago, I was working with a young lady who's probably a little younger than Olivia. And she just made a comment, oh, that ain't going to happen to me. I don't know why, but it ignited something in me so bad. I probably scared that child. I said, don't you ever let me hear you say that. Because I promise you, you walk to and from work every day. You you live, block, you could be snatched up at any time by somebody you know. So just remember what I always say. You could be sleeping with the enemy. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Jamie? Um, I just want to say uh, thank you for having us. Um, thank you to everybody um, being here and watching and, and saying their names, prayers, and um, hopefully, you know, this is 
the year we all get justice and answers and if you know something say something come forward you can Please. be anonymous just do the right thing you know Please. I promise you, you got our support. That's for sure. Yes. Love you, Aunt Tammy. Love you, too. <laughs> Y'all, don't forget, I mentioned it earlier. I know it's kind of off topic. If you are a friend of Renee, please go wish her congratulations. She got married today. Well, two days ago. and uh, But she's needing some prayers right now. Her and Lee, they are in Fayetteville in the hospital. So if you could just, good news wrapped with a little prayer would be great. Because that's where our hearts are right now. Yeah. Miss Renee, she's a she four. She would be here with us if she wasn't where she's at. Oh, I know she would have. I, I know Renee would have. She she is she's just another great person doing good things. And and that for all the darkness and all the, the bad, scary stuff that we encounter and see. She's always, mm -hmm. she's always yes. a flower. It's, it yeah. makes total mm -hmm. sense. Kat, do you have anything you want to wrap up with and we'll let everyone get to bed? Kat, oh, there she no, is. No, I'm here. <laughs> you know, if you know something, speak up. You can be anonymous. Uh, anonymous, you know, just speak <laughs> up. Do the right thing. You know, just do the right thing. <clears throat> Amen. Yep, yeah, and I appreciate Aunt Tammy and um, Sydney and Jen. So y'all keep on yeah. out saving, yeah. So we're a force, and yes, we are a force. <laughs> we're not stopping. No, Jamie, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Anytime we can, you know, we can do another live again on here. Just if, focus more on just getting more awareness with, with Sydney's story. Um, there's just so much more to tap into. So I appreciate it. And all of you viewers who are here, um, people that are going to watch this after the fact, thank you so much. Share, 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 <laughs> dig. Follow, if you follow, want follow. To. Our, some of, you know, some of our communities are open. We're always welcome to opinions, you know, way tactic like whatever you can bring that could help we're always open to that so if, if you may think of some angle or something like that that could help like we're all ears any of us at any point and aunt tammy will get out in front of you and karate chop whoever's trying to <laughs> we got you back i promise you <laughs> yes all right you guys will have a great weekend thank you so much you too thank, thank you bye, bye. bye. bye.